On today's Ask Your Rheumatologist, we ask the question, should you stop your arthritis medications when you get the COVID-19 vaccine? Before we go into the answer, a quick note that this information is based at the time of making this video, April 6, 2021. We know information continues to come out and we will continue to update uh, with further videos or on our website, so stay tuned there. As a brief review, which COVID-19 vaccines are currently available? So there are four available in Canada. We highlight the top two, the Pfizer and Moderna products, as these are the ones most likely to be offered based on availability, as well as based on uh, the population we're interested in here being those who have a rheumatic condition. How do these vaccines work? So mRNA vaccines, or the other ones, which are DNA vaccines, provide your cells with the recipe to make a small portion of the virus, in particular the spike protein that helps the virus enter the cells usually. And your immune system learns to recognize this in order to protect you. After the protein piece is made, the cells break down the instructions, so the vaccine, be it the mRNA or the DNA that you received, and gets rid of them. Once triggered by the protein piece, your body makes antibodies that help you fight the real virus if you are ever infected. How effective is the vaccine? As we've seen many times now, they do appear to be quite effective. The Pfizer and Moderna in particular appear to be 95% effective in preventing COVID-19 infections. Uh, and perhaps even more importantly, all vaccines are found to be very effective to reduce the risk of hospitalization, meaning severe COVID-19 infections, as well as death. What are the possible side effects of the vaccines? Side effects generally have been mild to moderate, lasting for only a few days, and more often seen after the second injection rather than the first. Most common side effects have been pain at the site of an injection, body chills, muscle or joint aches, a feeling of tiredness, or perhaps even feeling feverish, which all of these may indicate the immune system is responding. Some patients have experienced more severe reactions, similar to as seen as a flu vaccine, including higher fevers, and using things like Tylenol, Advil, or Aleve after you receive the vaccine may help manage side effects. As with all vaccines, there's a chance of rare but serious side effects, such as allergic reactions, and as you can see to date, that rate has been very low. And particularly with the mRNA vaccines, there have been no major safety concerns identified, and Health Canada continues to monitor for vaccine safety. So is the vaccine safe for patients with rheumatic disease? So experts agree that these vaccines can be used safely in patients with rheumatic disease, like rheumatoid arthritis and lupus, but really all our rheumatic conditions. And this includes for those receiving medications that influence the immune system. So medications like methotrexate or biologics, so forth. The CDC in the United States has recommended that persons with autoimmune conditions who do not have contraindications to vaccine in general may receive the mRNA COVID-19 vaccine. And the American College of Rheumatology has recommended that patients with autoimmune disorders should be prioritized for vaccination due to their higher risk for hospitalization and worse outcomes compared to those of the same age and gender. Will COVID-19 vaccines interact with therapies used to treat rheumatic diseases? To date, there is no data suggesting that vaccines are not safe for those with rheumatic disease, including those taking immunomodulating therapies. So from a safety point of view, there is no need to stop your medications for your arthritis. Where it gets a little more complicated though, is to answer the question, is the vaccine effective for patients with rheumatic diseases? So we know in general that vaccines may not be as strong or last as long in patients on immunomodulating therapies. This isn't specific to the COVID-19 vaccine, but vaccines in general. So it's possible, this is the same for the COVID-19 vaccine, but we don't know the clear answer on this. Small studies to date suggest the vaccine does result in an antibody response for those who are with rheumatic disease, although it may not be the same type of response 
as someone without a rheumatic condition. And recommendations of what to do in this situation are not consistent uh, depending on which authority is making those recommendations. Some medications theoretically may result in a lower immune response, not none, but lower immune response to the vaccine. And it's unclear whether one should stop these medications around the time of the vaccine. However, those on rituximab or on higher doses of prednisone, typically more than 20 milligrams per day, should discuss a vaccine plan with their physician or rheumatologist, rheumatologist to optimize vaccine timing. These me medications in particular appear to have the greatest chance of lowering the immune response to the vaccine, meaning the vaccine will not be as effective as we want it to be. So the timing of when we receive the vaccine relative to getting an infusion of rituximab or being on higher doses of prednisone may be important and warrants a discussion with your rheumatologist. For other medications, it's a balance between benefit and risk. So for those whose rheumatic disease is not under optimal control, it's probably better to continue on medications without stopping them when receiving the vaccine. So better to have as best control of the disease as opposed to worrying about what medication you're on. For those whose rheumatic disease is under optimal control, which likely means in remission for at least six months, but different rheumatologists may suggest different amounts of time, holding certain medications for one dose post-vaccination may result in a larger immune response. Again, we don't know this for sure, but this is extrapolating from other vaccinations. So medications like methotrexate or the JAK kinase inhibitors, so Zelgens, Illumiant, and Rindvok, may benefit from being held post-vaccination. Abatacept or Orencia may benefit from being held the week before and after the vaccine. But again, worthwhile discussing this with your rheumatologist, just to be sure. For all our other medications, they typically can be continued regularly. And these, continue, uh, these include medications like hydroxychloroquine, plaquenil, sulfasalazine, leflunamide, or TNF inhibitors, so things like Humira, Enbrel, Symphony, Remicid, Simsia, and our other biologic medications, Actemra. So again, just to briefly review, are vaccines effective for patients with rheumatic disease? Overall, yes, but to optimize our response for rituximab and high-dose prednisone, you should speak to your rheumatologist to ensure the best timing to receive the vaccine. You may consider holding methotrexate, a jack kinase inhibitor, or abatacept around the time of vaccine if your arthritis, if your rheumatic disease is very, very stable, but otherwise likely to continue. And your other medications you can continue as usual. Again, immunization is very important, is the single most effective means of protecting yourself from COVID-19 and will help ensure our most vulnerable and at-risk populations are protected as well. It will reduce the strain on our healthcare system to allow elective surgeries and other postponed services, including seeing your rheumatologist to continue. Protection from severe disease after receiving the vaccine occurs very soon after the first injection and more complete and likely longer live protection occurs about two weeks after the second dose. It may be that people who are protected by the vaccine can still carry the virus and transmit it to others, so recommendations for masking will be ongoing for now. Again, the bottom line, available vaccines are highly effective in preventing COVID-19 infection, and in particular, severe COVID-19 requiring hospitalization. Although there is no data proving their effectiveness in patients with rheumatic diseases, these vaccines can be used safely in patients with rheumatic diseases, as well as patients receiving drugs that influence the immune system. This information remains up to date as of April 6, 2021. Stay tuned and watch our website as we will continue to update information there, and we will post further videos as more information becomes available.